What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So we already know what time it is. Let's get this party started. It is Real Talk Wednesday, y'all. And let's see. What have I done lately? What have you done lately? That should be like the slogan for every single day. What have you done lately? Well, lately I have been drinking this apple cider vinegar water that just looks really nasty, like really dirty water. Doesn't this look like some water from like some just nasty, scummy pond? So, what have I done lately? So, if you guys are not aware and don't watch my videos every single day, unfortunately for you, unfortunate for you guys. But I did not upload a video Saturday and Sunday, this past Saturday and Sunday, um, because... A girl went to Vegas for the first fucking time, okay? Yes, all right? I went to Vegas for the first time. Now, mind you, I've only been living in Arizona um, three and a half years, and I've never been to Vegas. I've been to Beverly Hills. I've been to L.A. I have even been to freaking porn star freaking ceremonies, um, you know, like award shows, because they give a real award shows, like, you know, the Grammys and shit, porn stars have those too, so I've been to two of those to their parties, no, a bitch ain't a porn star, because if I was, that would mean I would have a banging body, well, no, because they have the thick girls too, which we still got banging bodies, but, you know, my neighbor across the street, we was really good friends, and she was a porn star, and we're still really good friends, but she doesn't live out here anymore, she moved to LA, she left a bitch whatever okay but I miss her but me and my best friend Rebecca we went to Vegas on Friday yes let me tell you it was really really nice it was really really fun um um, if you guys, I know those who have been to Vegas are very familiar with the Fremont Street area, the old town of Vegas where it began, you know what I'm saying? I think that's where it began. And they got the strip with the screen and people be flying through or whatever you want to call it. And all the people work in like the strip thing and there's like weirdos in the circles. I freaking loved it, okay? I had a blast. And then we went to like the other part of Vegas, the strip, where you have like all the fancy stores. I'm going to say it's called like the bougie part of Vegas where they have the Palazzo and they have all of that like bougie shit on the Mirage. I think that's called what you call it. And like um, Treasure Island Hotel. It was nice to look at because of the lights. And I really do like the lights. It reminded me of New York. But the streets were really clean. clean. That was the only difference. Um, but I really enjoyed myself a lot more on Fremont Street because everything was like so much cheaper. That was where the locals go. That is where, like, you see, like, the weird stuff. It's not even weird to me because I'm used to that shit from New York City. But I just felt more at home right there. I like the bougie part, too. But a bitch do like to be where she feels more in her own zone and tune. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not bougie. And I don't be going to those palazzios and those really high-end hotels, okay? So I, I need to be where my peoples is at, where the weirdos is at, because I could be one, too. They had all kind of people down in that area, and I was just, like, amazed. I took pictures. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun. The only thing that I really didn't care for too much was when walking in the casinos, they just reeked of, like, old cigarettes. And I was just, like, basically, like, damn, could y'all get some better ventilation in here? Now, y'all know I used to smoke. I used to smoke cigarettes. Um, Not weed, because it's not a use to. But the weed, I smoke. But it's a different type of smell, and it's not thickness in the air. With the cigarettes, it's a horrible smell. And I was just, like, so overwhelmed. And on top of that, like, some of the really good buffets are in the casino so you can smell like the cigarette stench when you trying to eat your food like hold the fuck up but anyway 
Anyway, we went to this one casino, I mean, not this one buffet. So it was me, Rebecca, and her husband, Chris, and we had like an amazing time. Um, and I will, of course, do a um, vlog video of that this week. I will have one for you guys. But, oh my God, they, I think it was called World Buffet, some shit like that. Rio on the World, or I don't know, whatever it's called, but it was amazing. They had drinks, or you can drink. Girl, let me tell you, we were so stuffed and full, all right? I'm just like, Rebecca, oh my God, Rebecca. I just worked out, like, been walking three miles for, like, the past three weeks to a month now. And all the weight that I have lost, I'm about to gain it back, fucking with you. But we went to that buffet. We went to a buffet the next morning in the hotel. Then we went to another buffet. We had so much fun. It was amazing. And I'm glad to have experienced my first time in Vegas with my friend. You know what I'm saying? It was her first time, too. So we drove down, and we met her husband because he was on a trip for work. And a business trip for work. So we drove down and we met him there and we had a blast. It wasn't a bad drive. It was four and a half hours. So we shared the drive in and, um, it was so much fun. I enjoy being with them. Um, some people think, oh, well, aren't you a third wheel? They don't treat me like I'm a third wheel. We, we get along that those are my peoples. That's my nigga. That's my negress, whatever you want to fucking call them. Those are my people. They're more or less like family to me. So we get along so well. Um, we have a lot of things in common. Like I've mentioned to you guys before, we both have five kids. We both have like the same dog. We both both have the same exact number in the house. It's a lot of similarities, which is kind of weird. My mom says it's kind of weird. And I could agree. But, you know, some things, some friendships are meant to be. So, yes, we had a blast doing that. So, yes, I was so happy. Like, oh my God. But, yeah, so I had a great time. And when I got home, I was so happy to see the kids because I had missed them. Even if it was for two days, I still missed them. And I was tired as fuck, okay? So, yes. Tired as well. So today I don't have no makeup on because, you know, a girl just came back from her walk and I wanted to do my real talks earlier during the morning times because that way I could edit and get them out and then possibly edit another video for two for a day. But also I have my grandson during the daytime on Wednesdays until like seven in the evening on Tuesday, excuse me, until like seven thirty, eight o'clock in the evening on Tuesdays. So I really don't like to do them that late at night because then it takes me longer and then I don't get to bed early. So if you see me some days on a real talk and I I look like this which is no makeup then y'all just gonna have to deal with it I think I looks pretty damn cute without the makeup now y'all see my eyebrows right they are like really growing back in do y'all see that do you guys see that growth oh my god look at those brows I cannot wait until they're like fully grown in I think it's been like two weeks and yes my wig is glued the freak down with that um got to be glue gel you know what i'm gonna do next though i'm gonna tr i got like a million things of tape so i think i'm gonna do those i think i'm gonna use my tape but let me tell y'all so anyway yesterday i went on a walk this is gonna make this real quick so we can get onto this real talk i went on a walk yesterday morning with my two dogs coco and sugar and they both two little dogs. So we, there's this guy that's ahead of us. You know what I'm saying? Like he's ahead of us, ahead of us. Um, and he's got two dogs. I really can't just name. I don't know what kind of dogs they are, but they small too. They're really hairy dogs. Um, but they seem like very vicious. Every time I see someone with those same dogs, they just seem like they're so damn uptight about whatever it is. They fucking uptight. So anyway, um, the guy is way ahead of us, and we finally do catch up to him because, you know, he's stopping with his dogs or whatever. So we're on the pathway, and on this pathway, you can either walk in the grass if you if your ass wants to, which I wouldn't advise because who wants to walk? Or you could walk on the pavement. So I guess he knew his dogs were a bunch of fucking assholes, so he walks and pulls them over onto the grassy area. And Sugar, Coco is more like laid back, whatever. Sugar, she's kind of like, you know what? Um... I see people and I'm about to start growling. And you know, he she puts her alert senses on and she's like her little spidey senses and she'd be like ready. She'd be on point. Coco is just like, ah, la, 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 la. If you want to pet me, you want to fucking pet me. This is Coco's attitude. 
So finally, we walked past, we were walking up on the guy, and his fucking dog started barking like a bunch of wild banshees. Coco is like trying to pull me towards them, but he's not even barking. And Sugar is growling and barking, and she's like jumping up. She's like, What? What's up? What's up? And I'm like, Cut it out because we don't do that. Cut it out because we do not do that. Basically, I'm just telling my dogs, Chill out. Chill the fuck down because we're not going to do this. If his dogs want to act like a bunch of assholes, that's cool. That's on him. So we get past the guy. We're probably like about a good yard past the guy. And I see one of his little dogs. Now, he has two of the exact same dogs. Now, mind you, I have a mini poodle and a mini Dotson. But his two dogs are exactly alike. One of them gets off the leash and the collar. Okay? So he ain't got nothing on. He charges Coco. All right, and so he's growling and barking like he's trying to snip at Coco. And Coco is like acting all submissive. Coco is acting more or less like he the girl and not the boy dog. Me, I, I've gotten bit once by my own dog in the face, okay? But I really don't want to get bit by no dog. But at this point, my spidey senses take over. You know, I was walking the dogs, minding my own business. And while I was walking my dogs, I was listening to my music. And I was also thinking about the movie I had seen the day before, which was a, do a dog's purpose. A dog's fucking purpose. A dog's purpose. I watched this movie with Mum Z, okay? And let me tell you guys, I was in tears. Like, when I say I cried hysterically watching this movie, it ruined my fucking makeup. I cried hysterically, all right? So as I was walking Coco and Sugar, I was thinking about this movie. And mainly I was watching Coco. Not so much Sugar because, you know, I haven't even had her a year. But Coco, he's 10. He's almost 11. I've had him since he was like five months old. So he has grown up with my kids and me. So as I'm walking Coco, I'm thinking about this movie and I'm thinking about how this dog died and blah, 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 blah. He came back as another dog reincarnated, ate another dog. And then he finally came back for like the third or fourth time as another dog reincarnated. The dog became homeless. He, he ended up going back to his original owner, who's now old man, you know, because he was kids with him and et cetera, et cetera. And the story was just so pretty and cute and so heartwarming. But, you know, I cried at the same time. And so as I'm walking Coco, I'm thinking about this movie and I'm saying to Coco, what is your purpose? You know what I'm saying? Because the movie just captivated me. Did this motherfucking dog just come charging at my fucking Coco? All hell broke loose, okay? All hell broke loose. I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen, but I didn't want Coco to get bit. He's already gotten bit by a pit bull, and I wasn't trying to see that shit. Plus, I was already in the zone about, you know, a dog's purpose and a dog dying and shit. You ain't about to take my dog out. Let me tell you, I guess my dog mother instincts took over because I started kicking the crap out of this man's dog and shit and screaming at the man, all kind of obscenities. Get your motherfucking dog. Get your goddamn dog. I'm going to kill your motherfucking dog. Get your dog. Coco got out of his collar. Now, I got, first of all, as I'm trying to fight this dog off on for my two dogs, I got my two dogs behind me, like pulling their straps behind me, and I'm kicking the shit out of one dog, just kicking and kicking and kicking, and I'm holding, and I'm screaming. I'm getting, like, caught up in the dog's leashes, my two dog's leashes. Finally, this man comes finally somewhat near me. He lets go of his other dog on the leash, okay? Why the fuck would you let go? So now I got your two dogs and my two dogs and I'm trying to fight them the fuck off? Coco slips out the collar and runs the fuck off. So now I got the collar. Coco's got a leather collar. And I got your two dogs and my dog, Sugar, right here. So now, Sugar trying to fight. She trying to fight the one dog. She like, whatever, I'm going for mine. You know what I'm saying? Coco runs the fuck off. And I'm beating this motherfucking dog that with a fucking dog leash and kicking them at the same time while Sugar's over here defending her shit. These dogs are not even biting, but you think they're biting, and I'm kicking them. And then the one dog that originally started the fight, he runs off behind Coco and starts nipping at his back. So I'm running behind him. I had to scoop Sugar up and pick her up because she like, fuck this. We about to do this. She Basically, her attitude is we about to fight. We going to fight. So Sugar is fighting. I'm fighting, and I'm running, and then I have to scoop sugar up because I'm like, fuck this. You ain't about to bite my dog. So I'm kicking this dog, scoop sugar up, then I'm running, 
with the fucking leash and I'm screaming all kind of obscenities this man and finally he gets his dog he's trying to apologize to me talking about I'm sorry they don't bite they just like to growl at people I'm like fuck you you just ruined my three mile walk you gonna see and try to tell me that your motherfucking dogs don't bite when they got teeth okay they got motherfucking teeth I'm so tired of people when they say my dogs don't bite anything will bite if you provoke it hell motherfucking I'll bite your ass if you provoke me to and that is my only way of defending myself I'm gonna bite you Okay, so don't sit there and tell me my dogs don't bite because if provoked and if they feel like their back is up against the fucking wall, these little bitches is going to bite. What What the fuck? Like, seriously, people are so fucking stupid. You know, I was like five minutes away from back going back to my house. If I would have turned around, I would have went home and it took me five minutes. But no, I continued on my walk out of breath. I was just so pissed the fuck off. Coco stopped running. I just was like, basically like, wow, here I am defending you, Coco. And you took the fuck off when I got sugar on my side. Sugar's probably like, listen, I'm a shelter dog. I ain't about that life. You know, I'm part of this shit. We about to go down. If it's going to go, we all going to go. Coco like, bitch, I have been sheltered all my motherfucking life. So I'm going to just take off and I'm going to run back to the house. Yes. That's what my three mile walk was like yesterday. On top of that, there's a bunch of weirdos, um, a, a group of weirdos that I didn't see in my complex or my subdivision. Like, why the fuck is y'all driving through here? A bunch of fucking weirdos. So, my thing is this. Don't go walking after 10 o'clock in the morning because that's when all the fucking weirdos come the fuck out. So, yes. And other than that, that has been my fucking week. Okay, hectic. Um, what else? Um, my son in New York was arrested um, because his license was suspended. And he wasn't aware of that. And he called me because he needed $100 more for his bail because it was 500 Couldn't split it up, so I ended up paying that. This was like on Thursday, Wednesday night. I paid that, $542 of his bail over the phone. From Arizona to New York. Um, because he's a good kid. And listen, he was like, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Because he's a welder and he gets paid pretty damn good. So he was not trying to lose his job. So of course I had to make sure that he got out. But, um, yeah. Life is crazy, for real. Like, it's for real. But anyway, so that was my fucking week. And I hope you enjoyed it. It was crazy. It was cray cray. Um, and yeah, so if you have a real talk that you want to be discussed on Real Talk Wednesdays, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, Real Talk. And other than that, we're going to get into this Real Talk. If you guys are wondering about the hair, this hair is probably like three weeks old wearing it now, this wig. I didn't make it. It's just a, a lace front. It's from um, youmayhair.com. I freaking love this fucking wig. Y'all know I love it if y'all see me wear it. I look, I'm rocking the shit without any makeup, okay? Like, for real. Favorite wig of all time. Favorite. So let's get into this, okay? Okay, so this one should be a good, good, good one. Hi, April. I hope you can help me on this. <clears throat> I sent you an email last year around February about moving to Arizona with my ex-boyfriend. Well, as you can tell, he's an ex, and I'm still in my hometown. Anyway, I have another issue, and you can call me Cree. Me and my new boyfriend have been together now for almost three months, and there have been, there has been a lot of drama. I've known my boyfriend since I was 16, which I'm now 24. I met him through his best friend and my friend. Let's call her Jill. Jill has been friends with me since I was nine and friends with my boyfriend since they were five. We all used to hang out together in a group and now there's no more of the group hanging out. The reason being is because me and my boyfriend, who you can call Carlos, are together. Jill dated Carlos back in 2009, and they didn't work out, but they decided to stay friends. Me and Carlos talked to one another in 2011, but I told him we couldn't continue because Jill and him had dated, and I wanted to be a good friend to Jill. Now, Jill is married, and we figured why not try again, me and Carlos. 
I mean, we were both single and now we were in a three month happy as can be relationship. Now Jill is mad because we didn't ask for her approval to date, even though she is married. I was pissed off because it shouldn't matter because you are in fact married. So she gave us, Jill gave us, me and my boyfriend Carlos, an ultimatum. Either stop dating or he and I, we can't hang out with the group because she said it would be awkward. I forgot to mention that her husband has no clue that her, Jill, and Carlos have dated. And he wouldn't prove of their friendship if he found out. I also forgot to mention that another guy... In, uh, another guy named Darren in our group has had a crush on me since the eighth grade as well. I know Miss April drama. Ever since she has given us the ultimatum, I haven't hung out with the group since. And my boyfriend went to Darren's birthday party, which I wasn't even invited to. Now, let's not forget, Darren is the one that liked me since the eighth grade, and he's also in our group. I don't know, Miss April. My boyfriend says... Um, that Jill will get over it in the next few months. But I want to say fuck it and fuck her because she hasn't been a real friend anyway. I can give you examples of her shunning me out of group activities because Darren, who likes me since the 8th grade's ex-girlfriend, didn't like me because, they, because she knew that Darren liked me. And they all had activities together, so she didn't want to invite me. Huh, I don't know. Is Jill right to feel the way she does, even though she's married and swears she doesn't have any feelings for my boyfriend, Carlos? Or is she full of shit? I feel like that she shouldn't care. Um, she wouldn't care if they were lingering feel. Oh, excuse me. I feel like that she wouldn't care if there were lingering feelings. And if she doesn't, if she does get over it, I want an apology for her being a bitch. Am I wrong to feel this way? So basically, let's just bust it down real quick. Okay, we're gonna bust it down. Trying to Cree's best um Cree's friend Jill used to date her boyfriend, Carlos. Well, Jill got married, but you know what I'm saying? Cree and Carlos got together. So, like I said, Jill used to date Carlos way back in 2009. Um that's 2009, it's 2017. But Jill is like, listen, basically, Tree and you, Carlos, I'm going to give y'all an ultimatum. Y'all either going to stop fucking dating each other or y'all not going to be able to hang out with the group no more. We ain't going to be able to hang out no more. Yes, bitch, I know I'm married and my husband don't know about him. And yeah, I used to fuck with him. But no, it's not bothering me. I don't have feelings for Carlos. I just don't want y'all dating. And if y'all don't stop dating, y'all can't be part of the group. Let me tell you something, Cree. Let me take a sip of this. You and Carlos have been dating for three months. Your friend Jill used to date Carlos back in 2009. However, your friend Jill is also fucking married. Now, here's the thing. If, bitch, if you really liked Carlos, you would have fucking got married to him, Jill, and not the next nigga. But that didn't work out for you. You and Carlos didn't work out. So what is you so mad for? If you marry, you shouldn't have to worry about no ex-boyfriends and who fucking dates him. You don't give nobody no ultimatum. So obviously, I think Jill still has feelings. And if that's the case, then maybe she should excuse herself from the group. Here's my thing. Don't give nobody no motherfucking ultimatums, especially, bitch, when you in the wrong. You got a husband in a relationship. Why the fuck is you worried about Jill, I mean, Cree and Carlos dating? Mind your motherfucking neck and go and carry along with your husband, your husband, okay? And all of this talk about, oh, you're not going to be part of the group. You're not going to come hang out with the group. We're going to shun you from the motherfucking group. What the fuck is Jill the leader of the motherfucking group? Is this goddamn Girl Scouts Club, okay? What the fuck is this, the Bad Girls Club or whatever the fuck it is? How, we grown-ass people. How the fuck you gonna tell me that I'm gonna be out the group? Like, is this a motherfucking clubhouse? Do we pay fees and dues? Because, bitch, if we don't pay no fees and dues, ain't no motherfucking group thing. I will hang out with this motherfucking group whether you like it or not. Me and motherfucking Carlos, okay? What the fuck is wrong with people? Y'all all in the group. It, obviously, um, Carlos going to still be in the group even if Carlos and Cree ain't dating. But it's awkward. 
It should be awkward to you anyway if Carlos is in the group, regardless of he who the fuck he dating. Let me tell you something. This group shit, you can't hang with me, you can't sit with me. We we grown ups, but you can't be in my group. You you can't hang with us. You can't you can't play with us in the sandbox, all of that bullshit. First of all, Jill needs to grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up because this is not like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we about to shun each other. Is this a Facebook group? I'm trying to figure out what type of group this is. Even if it was a Facebook group, who gives a fuck, okay? You want to shun me from the group? Bitch, go ahead. Let me tell you something. There's more to life than friends and groups and dumb shit like that. Yes, you want to have a good friend. She ain't really been a friend to you like that. She been shunning you from shit because certain people come and hang out with the group and then she don't want you around. Let me tell you something. Some friends you have to let grow, let go. You outgrow them. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we outgrow friendships, unfortunately. And sometimes, fortunately, it be all for the best. You know what I'm saying? When you got petty bitches or petty niggas in your group or your friendship or your circle, then you stop fucking with them. That's why my circle is no longer a circle, but it's just a motherfucking dot. It's like two little freckles. That's the fuck it. I don't have a group. I don't have a circle of friends. I just have certain friends and that's it. And I'm fine with that. Now, bitch, I'm not going to allow you to determine who I fucking date, especially when you marry. If you're married, you should not be telling anybody you got an ultimatum to stop dating each other or you guys can't be part of the group. That sounds so childish and petty, but more or less, it sounds really childish and you should be ashamed of yourself for even giving anyone an ultimatum like that. Like, who the fuck are you to tell me that I can't fucking hang out in the group no more because I'm dating someone that you used to date in 2009, but bitch, now you're married and you have a happy life and you fucking worried about I'm dating your ex-boyfriend. He wouldn't be your ex if you would have married him but you did it it didn't work out so carry the fuck along and we ain't even good friends like that let me tell you something i would tell her to kiss my motherfucking ass and fuck you with your bullshit okay and try me about the motherfucking group first of all your group is whack bitch and i don't even want to hang out with you and your motherfucking group of friends your group of friends are a bunch of dummies and me and carlos we're gonna go make our own motherfucking group bye felicia bye fernando bye felicia and felipe for real like seriously Bitches be so petty, that's why I don't have no friends, okay? Always worried about what the fuck you doing. Obviously, she has feelings for Carlos because if she didn't, it wouldn't be awkward. And if she didn't, she wouldn't be giving anybody ultimatums. Now, what you should say to her is, well... Does your husband know that you want so badly to be friends with Carlos? Does he know that Carlos is in the group and that you used to fuck with him? Because I'm pretty sure had he knew about this, you bitch wouldn't be in the motherfucking group. I'm just saying, sometimes you got to let a bitch have it. Sometimes you got to give them a dose of their own motherfucking medicine. That's why y'all see. Listen, y'all hear me talk about too many females as friends because I just don't. And on top of that, I just don't have the time nor the patience. And I'm not about to investigate females. And I'm not about to break my neck for no fucking friendship, okay? I have done that enough in the past. And I feel like this. When you find a good friend and you finally find a good friend, hold them dear to your heart. But if you got some friend that be fucking up and be acting real shitty and half ass with you, then let them bitches go. You know what I'm saying? You got to think like, okay, yeah, you might be missing out on group activities, but sometimes all these group activities, it's nice to be hanging with friends and have more than one or two friends in a circle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Girls night out or whatever. But sometimes a girl's night out can consist of just you and one female. And that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Not a bunch of females. Sometimes a girl's night out can consist of you and your boyfriend. And that's just you and his night out. And you're enjoying one another's company. When you get into the aspect of this bitch, this bitch, that nigga, this nigga, all this, you got a group thing going on. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Especially if you're going on a vacation, you guys want to split the bill, but to hang out all the time, too many different attitudes, too many different personalities, too many people want this, too many people want that. It's like, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with this. I'm just going to go about my business. Um, and when you got petty people like that, that's in a group, a friends with you guys, and you have a petty one, that's when you know, you know what? It's time for me to just Spread my wings and fly the fuck away. Just like that song by Troop. Spread my wings and fly away. I so love that song. But she petty. She knows she harboring feelings for this nigga. And yet she don't want to admit to it. She want to give 
I wish a bitch would give me an ultimatum like that. I wish a bitch would. I would go so fast off and fly off the handle on a bitch for giving me an ultimatum like that. That bitch wouldn't even know what hit her. I would hit her so bad with all the fucking negative words that's coming out of my mouth. She probably would have thought she got an ass whipping, like a physical ass whipping. Cause I was about to, cause I'm about to spew out a whole bunch of shit and obscenities to you, and I'm about to go in on you. Okay, that you would rather have me just fuck you up physically than fuck you up mentally with my fucking mouth verbally so yes i wish a bitch would give me an ultimatum i don't have patience that's why i stay to myself because i know how females can be and i know how dudes can be and the wrong fucking thing said may end up in us fighting or me slapping the shit out of you or me saying some shit to you that's really gonna hurt your feelings and you why and you might just wish death upon me i don't really want nobody wishing death upon me but you know what if you want to wish death upon me then listen Say some dumb shit to me. I'm going to fucking spew out a whole bunch of negativity to you that you ain't going to motherfucking like. So, for your friend Jill, cut that bitch the fuck loose. Because she married. She just a hating ass bitch. That's what the fuck I think. And for all y'all hating ass bitches, calm the fuck down and go sit in your motherfucking lanes. Like on some real shit. Calm the fuck down. Females is crazy. That's why I ain't got no friends. That's exactly why a bitch ain't got no motherfucking friends. So this one is short and sweet to the point. Hey, April, I'm a new subby, but I love your realness. So you can call me Ashley. I have been dating a guy for the past two years. He was in prison when we started dating, but I've known him for so many years. Everything was great. It was like a fairy tale. I went to visit him every weekend. I basically took care of him and prepared him for getting out of prison. He says he loves me and I love him. Now we broke up. Maybe four months ago, and I can't and I cannot tell you the reason why we broke up. Because there was no reason. He is now out, and we sleep together. We slept together multiple times. We sleep together. He is now out of prison, and we sleep together multiple times a week. I found out about a lot of women, including a friend of mine who was messaging and making sexual advances to him during our relationship. He claims they mean nothing and it was just something to pass the time while he was locked up. He also claims now he doesn't want a relationship, but he doesn't want to let me go. I feel like I shouldn't wait because I've already waited two years from him and now he's out. I still have to wait. I'm 30 years old and I just don't know. I love him and I know he's the one. I have no doubt that he loves me. Should I just wait or move on? I'm about to drink the last bit of this before I go off on you. Okay. Okay, so Ashley has been dating this guy for the past two years. They knew each other prior to their dating, so she started dating him while he was in prison. So she's been taking care of him, going to visit him. Everything she said was like a fairy tale. It was great. Everything was like a fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? She took care of him until he got out and they broke up. They be fucking, but he don't want to have a relationship with her. And, you know, he got these other chicks on the side sending messages to him, him sending messages to them. But he's just trying to say that it was just shit took past the time. Now, he's like, he don't want a relationship, but he don't want to let her go. And so she's like, should she wait? She knows he's the one. Girl, please. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to just scratch my ear because I, I want to make sure that I'm hearing this shit right. Did, did this bitch, um, Ashley, just tell me that Everything was great. She was visiting him, taking care of him while he was in jail. Everything is great. It's like a fairy tale. What bitch you know think that going to visit somebody, sending them commissary money, sending them packages, and preparing him to get out of jail is a fairy tale? What motherfucking planet we living on? Because I don't remember none of that shit being a fucking fairy tale when I would do that shit for my husband. Like, I don't remember... Like being on cloud nine when I would go up to the jail or put my money on a phone call or put or send my money the fuck out. I don't, I don't remember none of that being a fucking fairy tale. If it was, then I must be a lonely ass, desperate ass, no life having ass bitch. Okay. I don't think, first of all, I was fucking angry every time I had to do that shit. Not even angry, but pissed the fuck off. Like, oh, brother, here the fuck we go again. Like, I didn't find any of that shit to be happily. I, a fairy tale? What fucking, um, 
Walt Disney movie, you know that um, ends up with them in prison and shit. I, I don't remember no fucking fairy tale. Like, all the fairy tale movies that I've ever seen be from Walt Disney. And they end up really good. But I've never seen one with them in jail and it being a fairy tale movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? With the Disney sign. I, I don't remember that shit. So, bitch, I don't know what the fuck you talking about when you talk about it's a fairy tale. Now, is she really asking me, should she wait for the nigga? Bitch, you already waited two motherfucking years, but that ain't even the, the coating or the icing on the cake. The nigga is like, oh, well, he don't want a relationship, but basically he'll fuck you. Second of all, he got other bitches writing him and messing with him, and he talking about it's just to pass the time, but he really like her, and she love him, and he know he's the one. Bitch, where is he the one? Because he done had you taking care of him, which you were the one to pass the time to. Let's not get it twisted, because your mind is way off. Scotty got you so beamed the fuck up to planet Mars right now that you're not even seeing clear. Let's bring this shit back down. Come back down to planet Earth, bitch. Because you was one of those to pass the time as well while he was in prison. And, bitch, as he is out now, you is still one of those to pass the fucking time when he need his motherfucking rocks off, okay? So let's not get it twisted. You are lonely and you need to focus on something else and leave him the fuck alone. You're 30 years old. You're talking about waiting for some motherfucking body that's already had you waiting for two years. Now he out of jail and you still sitting around? Bitch, wake the fuck up because he used you for a visit, for some comments for some phone calls and whatever the fuck else you could give him he used you and now that you out he he's out he using you for some pussy okay let me tell you something i have been there and done all of that prison shit we're not even gonna go on about this prison shit because the next email that i got is also about some girl from prison we gonna just call this behind bars okay but this about the dumb shit. Like, fuck the fact that he ain't in prison no more. Who gives a fuck about that? But you done held him down. He got out. And he telling you to kiss his ass. He gave you his ass to kiss, basically. And he's stringing you to fuck along. But you acting like motherfucking Pinocchio and Geppetto. And you just dangling bottom strings. And thinking, like, he really love you. And he really wants something with you. But just right now. Right now. And you feel like waiting. Bitch, keep on motherfucking waiting. You gonna be sitting in that chair catching cobwebs. Your whole pussy gonna have cobwebs all over. Oh, but maybe not because you gonna still fuck him. Let me tell you something. You done already been caught in the trap. Now it's your time to get the motherfucking out the trap. He like a spider and you like a fly caught in the web. Bitch, get loose of that venom and keep it fucking pushing, okay? A nigga dick is good, I guess. I'm not sure, but don't let that shit have you mesmerized to where you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you tripping over your own motherfucking shoelaces. Like, bitch, wake the fuck up, all right? He's the one. I'm really trying to figure out how he's the motherfucking one. You you started. You started dating him while he was in prison. So what the fuck? Did he make a wrong phone call and get your ass on the line? Or he decided to write you a letter or send you a message? If any of that is the case, bitch. He was bored and lonely and needed you to pass the time. What makes you think that he really wants to fuck with you? And he's out and he doesn't want to fuck with you. Obviously, you was his jail girlfriend. Jail girlfriend, okay? Some of y'all be so stuck in prison and y'all really not in prison. But y'all minds be like behind bars because y'all just really don't snap into reality. I'm not saying that being with somebody in jail is a bad thing. Because, listen, I'm not here to judge, and I've already been there and done that with my husband, okay? He's been in jail, and I've held him down. But let's just keep in mind we were married. However, I'm not still going to shun anybody that's in jail, because if you truly love the person, then you really, truly love the person. However, if he's treating you like you ain't nothing but a commissary package when he gets the fuck out, and he really don't care, and he's treating you like that, then obviously you have to put two and two together and realize that you really weren't meant to be together also the fact that he got other bitches and he's trying to tell you that it was just to pass the time me personally if some dude told me that about myself like oh it was just to pass the time i would stop to think to myself like hmm he said it's just to pass the time hmm it's probably i'm probably one of those to pass the time too what makes me so fucking special ashley 
what the fuck make you so special that um, he ain't playing you? Really, let's think logical here. Let's think like grown adults because you're 30 years old. Fuck that jailbird, nigga. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. Throw him up the do some. Peace, nigga. Peace out, bitch. Bye. And carry on with your life. Because you think he's the right one is because you've waited two years and you've probably been loyal and faithful and all of that goody good stuff and you're now stuck on him because you feel like there's something going to happen. Let me tell you something. While you waiting, that nigga going to be fucking every bitch that's around the corner on his block and, and across the street. Okay? So, he's a user. You was bamboozled. Time to pick up the pieces and string it the fuck along. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel like you got to get back at him. Don't feel like, oh, I'm going to do something to him. Just move the fuck along and not even worry about the shit. Because some niggas ain't even worth our time. True, indeed. I'm just going to be real. Some of them are not even worth our motherfucking time. So should you move along? Yes, bitch. Fucking run along. Okay? Run the fuck along. What the fuck is wrong with y'all sometimes? I'm just... Trying to figure the fuck out. <sighs> so this one right here, like I said, I love when I get a good freaking picture. Because I love to put people's faces with the picture. So this one is also a real talk about a prison, but I don't really think it's like that. Hey, April, I love your real talk videos. You can call me Amber and my boyfriend, Jay. So I have been with my boyfriend for four years. He went to jail six months after I met him. He was in prison for one year and 10 months. I stayed down the whole time, went to see him, sent him money, kept money on the phone for us to talk. Mind you, I was 21 to 22 years at that time. So 2015, he gets out of jail. We're together that night. The next day, his ex-girlfriend calls my phone saying they had sex and she gave him money. And he swore up and down that it never happened. So I stayed in a relationship. I know, stupid. He was living with one of his friends for maybe six to eight months. We agreed to move in together. I moved with him at his new apartment. I wasn't there two weeks. We get into it, and he calls me a bitch. So I pack my shit and leave. As I'm leaving, he helps me move some of my stuff. Never once said, I'm sorry. Nothing. Shaking my head. So maybe a month later, we start back talking. And for a reason, he likes to bring me down and try to make me feel less than. I'm a hairstylist. My mom owns the salon. The salon. I would say I'm doing very well for myself, but he tries to make me feel less than. He will call me dumb and say all I care about is weave and eyebrows. A few days, we will be all in love. I'm in love. Then he flips to a totally different person and turns evil. Last week, we were in the car, and I was telling him that he needs to learn how to talk to me better. He's like, okay. Then he flips and starts going off. He said, I don't care about being with you. I can find me another you. He said, it's bitches that want to fuck with him. He can live his life and be happy without them. Says, I need to move back so he can stop acting crazy. And then says, I need to move back in with him so he can stop acting crazy. He's bipolar. I couldn't take it no more. So I got out the car at the club we were pulling up at and walked away. And he gets out the car to try and find me. But my thing is, if you feel like that, why get out to come get me? I had already had his number blocked for a few days prior, us going out. So if you feel like that, why are you still calling and texting me? So when I actually leave him alone, he says, I want to go fuck with other people. And I've probably been fucking with somebody already. I don't understand. I really want him out of my life. Be all it does. Uh, I really want him out of my life. Be um, my life. All it does is bring me pain and headache. But he won't go away. He will call blocked, come to the salon and try to make it like it's me. Like he didn't just say he can find another bitch. And he's trying to make me feel guilty for actually trying to leave without him. When he said what he said and what, what he wanted. Shaking my head. What should I do? And she's so pretty. Talking about all she care about is wigs and um, weaves and freaking eyebrows. Like, really, dude? Hold the fuck up. So Amber... And her boyfriend, Jay, had been together for four years. Six months out of the relationship, he went to jail and spent almost two years in jail, a year and ten months. Anyway, when he gets back out, you know, her, Amber, and Jay have had sex. You know, that's what you do when your boyfriend just comes home from jail. But his ex-girlfriend is calling her phone talking about how she done fucked Jay and gave him money. Anyway, 
she finally moves in with him without six to eight months after him being out of prison. Within a week or two, he starts spazzing out, calling her all kind of bitches or whatever. So she's like, I'm out, and she leaves. This nigga helps her pack her shit and move some of her shit out. Never once does he apologize. So within like a week or so, they start speaking to each other again. She doesn't move back in, I don't think. No, she doesn't move back in. But he more or less like bipolar. He says mean things like, fuck you, bitch. I don't need you, bitch. I can get another bitch that's like you. Bitches want to fuck with him and all of this shit. All she care about is weaves and, and eyebrows. But she got a job, so what the fuck does it matter if she cares about weaves and eyebrows? That's her fucking career. That's her profession. Nigga, what did you do to get locked up? Is your profession? What the fuck is your profession? Because she didn't tell me none of that. And he acting all bipolar and crazy coming to her jobs, trying to act like it's basically her, saying maybe if she moved back in, he wouldn't be acting all crazy. She don't want to be bothered with him no more, basically. She wants him out of her life. What should she do? Bitch, what the fuck I would do is go to the police station and get an order of protection and change your motherfucking number, okay? Change your number. Because if he's calling you from block numbers, it's not that hard, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you blocked him from one number. He could use somebody else's phone and, and call you. So it's not that hard. So what you need to do is you need to take it professional, the professional way, and seek help. Seek help, all right? He seems like he is um, a type of person who just likes to bash women and put them down. And like you said, he puts you down. And next thing you know, to me, it just sounds like he's going to get physical because of his words. And if you're telling somebody that they need to learn how to talk to you better, obviously it's not supposed to be. You shouldn't be in a relationship. If you're in a relationship with someone and you have to constantly remind them how to speak to you, to talk to you with respect then that relationship does not need to be a relationship. It needs to be void. You need to get out of it. It's a toxic, unhealthy relationship. And why be with somebody who doesn't respect you and doesn't appreciate appreciate you as a person? True indeed, none of us want to be alone. I say this all the time. However, I would rather be a lonely ass bitch and happy than be in a relationship with someone who is going to make me miserable and treat me like shit and disrespect me on a constant, constant daily basis. Especially if you got bipolar. You come into my job looking for me, starting shit. You calling up my phone, starting shit. You, you telling me in my motherfucking face that you can get another bitch like me. Bitches want to fuck you. The first time you tell me some shit like that, nigga, you ain't got to worry about it. You can have any bitch out here you want, but one of them bitches will not be me. So me personally, what I would do is I would fucking leave him alone and I would go to the police station and seek um, a order of protection against him and keep it on record. So that way, maybe his punk ass will go back to fucking jail because if he constantly keeps harassing you and he's bipolar and he snaps out and spazzes the fuck out, you don't really know what his next snap out, spaz out, bipolar move could be. It could be punching you or hurting you. And we don't really want to get to that point where it's physical, you know what I'm saying? And it seems like you're telling him you don't want to be bothered, but he's still seeking you, which is a form of stalking. To me, it's a form of harassment. And it's just a form of just bothering the fuck out of you. Like, listen... Nigga, go be with whoever the fuck you want to be. In my opinion, it seems like he's probably got some bitches on the side anyway. And and me, I'm saying this because if a nigga could come out of his face, a man, a man, if a man could come out of his face and be like, oh, I don't need you, bitch. I got many bitches like you. I can get another bitch like you right now, tomorrow, whenever. I got bitches that want to fuck with me. Then that right there tells me that. You've been cheating. If you can be so disrespectful to say something like that to a person, then that means that you have been fucking behind my back. How do you know that bitches want to fuck you? Okay? Unless you smiling up in their face and these bitches is talking to you. And if they telling you they want to fuck you, then I'm pretty sure you trying to give them the business. I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. You know what I'm saying? I try to figure out sometimes what the fuck is up with females and dudes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like me, I guess, because I have been through so much that um, I just really don't like to tolerate anything anymore. I'm just not going to tolerate nobody's bullshit. And for me, I just feel like, you know something, if I have to tolerate your shit for too long, then I just don't want to be bothered. Like, I'm not going to be bothered. 
I'm not going to give myself a headache. I've been through a headache long enough in my past relationships. And I just think like, like this, like for me personally, like life is too short to be unhappy. And I say this all the time, but it's a true fact. Life is too short to be unhappy. And I'm not going to let anybody fuck up my vibe. I say that all the time, every day. I'm not letting you fuck up my vibe. I'm not because my life, I'm 42 years old. So I have lived almost half of my life and I really don't want to be irritated for the remainder of it because it's going to go just like that. You know what I mean? I'm 42 today. Next, if it, I'll be 52 before you know it. Life is short. It goes so quickly. The days go by so fast. And why not enjoy it when you can? When you get out of a relationship that with someone that has been a hurtful, miserable relationship, the first thing you want to do is fucking breathe, okay? You don't want to worry about another relationship. You don't want to be in another relationship. You just want to breathe. And and that's what I'm doing now. I'm just breathing. True and Indeed, I have back, I'm, I'm back in a relationship with my ex-husband, but at least we're not in the same state. You know, we're kind of apart, and that allows me to breathe and get my mind together and figure out if this is something that I really, really want to do. But it's toxic when you're in a relationship with someone and they're just constantly irritating you and irritating you. And me personally, I'm not going to allow anyone to irritate me. And back in the day, I would probably be so against calling the police on somebody and I, cause I would feel like, Oh, maybe we could work it out. Maybe things will get better. We could work it out, but that shit don't work. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, that shit don't work. I'm not going to let any man or female or anybody for that matter, irritate me and bring me out of my character and my zone. So personally, what I would, do in your situation is I would just go and report his ass to the police. He's coming to your job harassing you. You can't do that shit and you calling me. I already blocked your number. Now you're calling me from like strange numbers and you calling me out of my name and shit. If that's the type of person you think that I am, then you know what? You need to step the fuck off. So me personally, my suggestion to you would be to get an order of protection and let him know, listen, I don't want to be bothered anymore. Plain and simple. This is over. This is not working out and I'm not trying to allow it to work out over done and that's it and if you got a brother or a male cousin and he still keep fucking bothering you bitch please let that nigga get fucked up he don't want to get it fucked up okay don't get it twisted dude you too cute you too pretty to be fucking dealing with low-life scumbags it's sad that men could come out of jail and act like a total asshole because they shit they think that they shit don't stink you know what i'm saying and it's sad that women will let these men that come out of jail blind them with their cuteness or their eggplant you know what i'm saying i'm still trying to figure out to this day why the fuck do people call a dick an eggplant like i'm sorry but if i see a motherfucker dick i mean if i seen somebody's dick or let me see let me phrase it if i seen a man and his dick look like an eggplant i'm not fucking with you okay because an eggplant is a weird looking shape and if your dick is shaped like that i'm not fucking with you so i'm really trying to figure out why is it just for black men because of the color or can a white man call his dick an eggplant or is it like a banana what i mean i'm trying to figure this the fuck out either way you know what, sweetheart, it's time to get an order of protection and live your fucking life. Don't let no motherfucking crazy ass person harass you. And on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. I don't want my memory card to run out, so I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious, and I'll see you in a soon-to-come video. And leave your opinions and comments below. Bye. <laughs>